there guys, this is Malorian and this is going to be another Warcaster review. And this time we're going to be coming back to Mercenaries and we're going to be talking about Drake McBain. Now Drake McBain is a great caster with a very cool name if nothing else. And he just has a lot of character to him. So there's a, a lot of fans, but again being a mercenary, you don't normally see him. So we're going to be talking about what his actual rules are, his abilities, and then some tricks and tips and some models you probably want to take along with him. But as we're going to get to with that part, he can actually run a lot of different stuff. So Drake McBain, he's a mercenary caster. He has six focus. He's speed six, so average. Strength seven. Uh, mat six, which is okay. Rat seven, which is five, which is okay again. Uh, defense 15, armor 15. So that's about middle of the road. But we're going to learn here that it actually gets a little bit better here. Like this looks like kind of like basic stats. But he has some things that push this past this. He is going to be Command 8, so you know, a little bit on the low side. He's going to have Tough, which is not something to really scoff at, right? Tough is like, oh yeah, whatever, on a caster. But you know what, sometimes that Tough in a caster is a big deal. So the fact that he has it, w sure, why not? Now his weapons, he's going to have a hand cannon, so sure, why not? You know, hand cannons are nice to have, extra little shots from the back. Uh, his actual weapon is called the Undertaker. Now this weapon has reach and is magical and is PAL 13. So it's again not that bad. Now if we look at what this has though, what does Undertaker have? Grievous Wounds. Now that's a really great ability because of course if you're going up against a Warlock they won't be able to transfer damage. So really if you get Drake McBain to a Warlock it's probably dead uh, past this. You're, they lose tough, so I mean that's nice if you're fighting trolls. Uh, they also can't be healed. So if you're going up against some sort of beast, you can go take out an aspect knowing that it won't be healed back. And so if you ever, you know, fail to kill a beast, it's actually not that bad because it'll be very hard for them to retaliate back against you. But then again, don't be throwing Drake McBain against, you know, beasts for no reason. Now, some of the other rules he has in the back here is he is gang fighter. So if you ever get into melee with something that's already fighting a mercenary model, he is going to be getting plus two to his melee attack and also to his damage rolls, which really means that he is then mat eight and then P plus S 15. And that gets much more respectable, right? That's a, a much bigger thing to worry about. And so you have to really watch out for that. Plus, he has unyielding so that whenever he's engaged, he also gets plus two armor. So that 1515 becomes 1517. And yeah, in melee, it can be actually fairly hard to kill Drake McBain. You know, defense 15 isn't amazing, but it's usually big enough that's force forcing boosts. And then he already has that pretty good armor to go behind it as well. Now he has a really good number of spells. First one is going to be countermeasures. Now this one is an upkeep. He can put onto a target friendly model or unit and pretty simply any enemy models are within five inches of one of these models that have countermeasures up. They just can't make range attacks. Now as far as I know I'm pretty sure this is just unique just to Drake McBain and this is a fantastic signature spell. Normally you can't shut some things down from shooting like Colossals, right? Colossals can even shoot even if they're engaged. But with Drake McBain, if he puts up countermeasures, this can shut down a lot of shooting. You have to also to keep in mind that if you were to put this onto a larger unit, let's just say it's a unit of press gangers with advanced deploy, or maybe it's halberdier, something cheap and numerous, they can just run up, spread out, and you can stop an entire gun line from shooting. So again, not the best uh, spell that's always going to be used in every single game, but when this one is a big deal, it's a massive deal. Uh, even something to keep in mind here too is models that have gunfighter won't be able to make gunfighter attacks against this. So if you're worried about Kane 2 going and gate crashing over and trying to kill uh, Drake that way, well, no, that wouldn't work because if this thing's up and that he's within the range, well, good luck trying to get this off. Uh, he also has Energizer, so this one here can spend up to three points of focus, and then models in his battle group get to move inches equal to the amount he spent. Now, 
for himself, that could increase his assassination range. So that's something that could be done with him. Uh, it could also be done for his jacks. But again, for mercenaries, once they started taking a lot more of the Colossals, that Energizer started being a lot less helpful. Uh, of course, you can always take this with shooting jacks. Let's say it's a mule, and you want to be able to aim and have the most distance possible you can always energize her up the mule so there's there's some things you can do there of course if you're trying to take him with say Rossinante right Rossinante same thing you could be moving up aiming and of course Rossinante could be going for those defensive attack things as well and again Rossinante while we're talking about some things to take in melee that would basically make Drake McBain a 17-17 so again very difficult to try and kill Next one here is going to be called Failsafe. Now this one here has to be on a jack. They get plus two armor and they don't suffer the effects from crippled systems. This is a fantastic one to take because first of all, you don't need to worry about mechanics. You know those bad times where, oh no, Rossinante lost his gun and he was going to shoot something or whatever, I've, I've lost this system here on my Colossal, it's almost completely crippled. Well, you don't care anymore. You add this on, and not only does it get plus two armor, but you're ignoring, ignoring all these crippled systems. So, again, armor is awesome, the whole idea where you don't really need a mechanic uh, in those pinch situations where like, oh no, my Cortex is out or something like this. Uh, you get to just do this here, and it just ignores all these crippled systems. So, a very nice spell to have. Um, next one after this is going to be Fortune. This one here is also going to be an upkeep, just like Failsafe was. And this one says a target-friendly faction model or unit can re-roll re its miss attack rolls. And this can only be done once per turn. This is a very nice thing, and it just says attack rolls. It doesn't say melee or range or magic, so it can be really be anything, and it really just makes it so that this unit gets to re-roll. And so anything that you think is really critical that you want to make sure goes through, you can put this fortune onto it. Uh, of course, anything that's making the most amount of attacks, uh, this is per model though. Remember this, that it can reroll uh, its first miss attack roll. So if you put this onto, say, a galleon, you don't get to reroll all those attacks, just one. So it goes a lot better on a unit. Uh, something, say, like Crow's Cutthroats, get a lot from this because their rat's kind of bad, but when they hit, it's awesome. So getting to reroll those are great. Or even a melee unit. If you want a melee unit to really get in there and destroy something, and like, oh man, I need seven, so I'm not really going to do that many hitting. Well, if you're getting to reroll those hits, it's actually a really big deal. So again, um, a, just a very nice toolbox ability to have on this card. Next up is going to be Jackhammer, and this one can be, again, very crucial in a lot of different situations. Uh, for example, let's say what it actually does. It's a range 6, and then what you get to do is you get to target a model in your battle group, and they get to immediately make one melee attack. Now, this has lots of different uses. If you heard me talking about back with Darius, it's the same thing. So. If somebody runs up to you and they go and they make sure that, let's say it's Epic Iris, so you can't allocate any focus. So, oh no, now this Jack can't make lots of attacks. Well, yes I can, I'll just Energizer it and I'll just make my attacks that way. Or let's say it lost its Cortex, same type of thing. Uh, if they came up and you jammed one of your Jacks, you can Energize, or sorry, you can Jackhammer first, kill those models in the way, then activate the actual Jack and charge off after something else. As well, it's a way of basically allowing you to put all six of your focus into one Jack. Uh, normally, your Galleon, you can only put three focus into it, so it can only make its two initials plus another three. Well, with this, you can just keep jackhammering it, and now it gets to make eight attacks total. Very, very, very powerful. So, again, a, a very nice thing just to kind of have extra on the side. Then he also has Rift. This one here is an AoE 4, PAL 13, and it's going to be one of the ones that actually hits. It is an also start staying there as rough terrain. So this is a nice thing if you're up against say Kador or something like this or Menoth where possibly like there's some jacks or something that don't have any pathfinder you can really use this to try and go at it and try and slow them down. So overall that's all the spells and they really cover a lot of things. There's some things good for infantry, some things good for jacks and it really covers a lot of the different things you might want to be taking with Drake McBain. But then we also get to his feet. Now his feet reads like this. 
Choose a number of friendly non-Warcaster faction warrior models currently in McBain's control area, up to the number of focus on him plus five. So you really want to do this on a turn where he has lots of focus. Uh, of course, you're doing this during his activation, so this is after you've gone and given off your focus. So this is a feat that does a lot better when you're not, on a turn at least, when you're not giving a lot of your focus out of jacks, because the most you can get out here is if he has focus six, he's not allocating anything, he's not upkeeping anything, then he can be doing this to 11 models. And what this is actually doing to them is pretty fantastic. When a chosen model is disabled, it heals one damage point and is knocked down. So what it really does is it's invincible tough. It's just going to say automatically, oh, did you just disable that model? Yeah, it's going to heal right back up, and uh, now it's only knocked down. So if you have any key, key models that you need to keep alive, maybe it's Gorman, maybe it's Boom Howler, maybe it's some solos that you really want to make sure alive. Maybe it's something where I want this invincible line in the front. You know how a lot of times you want to try and jam and keep things back? Well, imagine if all those things were just unkillable. You can knock them down, but you just can't kill them. This is what this feet does. Now, of course, you know, it says non-warcaster, so unfortunately you can't do this on McBain to try and avoid an assassination, but it's a, a very, very great feat for keeping those key models alive, and can also be a lot for board control as well, as you know that these models will not die and will be in the way. Now, keep in mind that knockdown models won't be doing free strikes and all those other things, but there'll still be those bases in the way. So, Again, you're going to have to try and balance this when you're going to be wanting to give out focus, when you're going to be wanting to do this feat, but overall, a very strong feat. Now, also keep in mind, too, that any type of ability, say like there's a Gallows Grove or something like that, that is going to be stopping healing is going to be bad for this. Or remove from play at the right step could actually get past his feet. So look out for some things like that. Now, overall though, what are some of the things you want to take in his list? Like I said, he handles a lot of different things. Anything that normally you might want to not take because, oh wow, this thing is usually so great, but the opponent always knows to kill it. Well, now they can't kill it. He runs a pirate boat very well because all those solos that make all the rest of the pirates so good, he can guarantee that on that one critical turn, they are not going to die. So that does very well. He does very well with a jam list that can get in there and really lock things down. He can do a range list, again, with the being able to, again, put the line in front to keep things away and then being able to energize your units up and still being able to aim as well for ever shooting units you can put fortune on it's he can really go and buff up all these different types of things be they jacks solos or units so kind of a real jack of all trades and i guess in the end i've been saying all these great things but the bad thing about him is that you'll find that when you're trying to play him that your focus only goes so far there's all these lovely things you'd love to do but he is only focus six, no way of really getting more, and it's even at that point there where you don't want to spend the focus on the turn that the feat's going on, so it kind of contradicts itself. But either way, a great fun model, and you should go try it. So there you go, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.